In this demonstration, we're going to discuss viewing Linux log files. Now, some Linux log files or text files can be viewed with any text utility like cat, less, more, head, tail, and so on. But others are binary files that can only be viewed with the appropriate utility. We're going to look at both of those in this lesson. I'm going to first switch to my root user account here. Now, almost all of your Linux log files are stored in the same place. That is the slash var slash log directory. If I do an ls command, you can see there are many different log files and subdirectories containing log files within var log. Let's begin by looking at this one right here. It's called boot.log. Now understand that during system boot, many useful log messages are generated and they can be very helpful when you're troubleshooting problems. However, most modern Linux distributions hide these messages with a nice graphical splash screen during system boot up. In the old days, you actually could see them being scrolled across the screen, but not anymore. Now, all is not lost because all of those messages are saved right here in the boot.log file in slash var slash log. Oh, and be aware that on some distributions, this file may be named slightly differently. On distributions such as OpenSUSE, it is boot.msg from boot messages. It's the same file, contains the same information. It just has a slightly different file name. Now the boot.log or boot.message file is a straight text file. So you can actually view it with any text manipulation utility you want. For example, if I wanted to view the end of the boot.log file to see the last few messages that were generated during the system boot, I could enter tail boot.log and I can see the last couple of boot events. If I want to view it all, I enter cat boot.log and all the log messages that were generated as the system booted up are displayed on the screen. Now you can view more detailed boot up messages using the dmessage command. Now the dmessage command is used to view the kernel ring buffer. I'm going to hit enter here and you can see that it provides much more detailed boot information than we saw in the boot.log file. And it, it, as you can see, it's a quite long file. So if necessary, you can type it to more so that you can pause the output a page at a time. Now, one common thing we do with the dmessage command is actually redirect the output to a file. There may be situations where if you've paid for support for your Linux distribution and you're engaged with a tech support representative trying to solve a problem, they may ask to see the contents of dmessage. So what we do is type dmessage and then redirect the output to a file. I'm going to put it in my root user's home directory and let's call it boot.dmessage. Now if I do a cat command of the boot.dmessage file in my root user's home directory, we can see that all the contents have been output. And then I can take that data and send it off to the tech support rep and they can analyze it to see what's going on with my system. Let's go back and look at the contents of the var log directory. Another log file in here that you need to be familiar with is WTMP or WTEMP. WTEMP contains a list of all users who have authenticated to this Linux system. Now, this file is a binary file. It's not a text file, and therefore you cannot use cat or less or tail to view it. Instead, you have to use the last command. You run last, the contents of the WTMP file are displayed on the screen. We'll spend more time working with last in a different demonstration. There's also a log file in here called last log. The last log file contains a log of the last time each user authenticated to the system. This is also a binary file, and so you can't view it with cat, less, tail, or head. You have to use instead the last log command. When I run the last log command, the contents of the last log file are displayed. We'll spend more time with last log again in a different demonstration. I'm going to clear the screen here. Let's do an ls command again. Now on older Linux distributions that used init instead of systemd, there was a log file in here that we found incredibly useful called the messages file. And it contained just about all of the log entries for the entire system. And it was a text file that could be viewed with cat, less, tail, and so on. And as you can see, there is no file here named messages anymore. It's no longer used on a distribution that uses the systemd daemon. Instead of syslogd, 
System D distributions use journal D for logging. And the main log file is located here in the journal directory. Now the journal is a binary log file. You can't view it with cat, less, tail, head, or any of those other commands that we used to use on older systems to view the messages file that we just talked about. Instead, you have to use the journal control command. When I run journal control, the contents of the journal are, are displayed on the screen. And we'll cover journal control in more depth in a different demonstration. However, there is one key thing I want to show you here, and that is the fact that the journal can be really useful in situations where you're trying to troubleshoot a specific problem on the system. To show you how this works, I'm going to open up a new terminal window over here. And I'm going to switch to root. I'm going to go back to my first window. I'm going to clear this so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to run journal control with the dash F option. Now the dash F option will first of all display the last few lines, the most recent entries in the journal on the screen, and then it will continue to monitor the journal for any new entries that are added. And as they are added, they are displayed on the screen. So we can basically see what's going on with the journal. The problem is if I just run the journal control command straight, it just displays the current snapshot of the journal. It's not interactive, it's not updated. Things could be changing on the system as we're looking at the journal and we won't see them reflected. To fix that, we use the dash F option to continuously monitor the journal and display new entries as they're added. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter here and you can see the last few lines of the journal are displayed. And notice that we didn't get the cursor back. That's because the journal control command is actively monitoring the journal, waiting for new entries to be added. I'm going to slide this over just a hair. And now I'm going to go over to my other window, and I'm going to generate a log message. I'll do that with the logger command. Now the logger command is used to manually add entries to the system log, either syslogd or journalD. doesn't matter. It works with both. It's usually just used for testing purposes to make sure your logging configuration is working properly. For our purposes, we're going to use it to simulate some error event occurring on the system, and we're going to see that error event pop up over here in the journal. So I'm going to enter logger space and then the message that I want to save to the system log in the journal. Okay, so I'm going to send a hypothetical critical error has occurred message to the journal. Hit enter. And notice that the message that I created with logger is immediately displayed over here in the journal. So this is a great way to troubleshoot problems on your system, such as a system service that isn't starting properly. You run journal control F in one window, you start the service in the other window, and then you can see the log messages that are generated as that service starts over here. And a lot of times you can find really good information for troubleshooting as you do so. Let's go ahead and break out of here. Let's clear again and run an ls command to view the contents of the var log directory again. Now you'll notice that some system services are configured to save their log messages into a separate file outside of the journal. For example, we have a log file here for the MySQL daemon. We have a log directory here for our web server running on this system. We have a log file here for our system firewall. There's a directory over here that contains log messages for our CUPS printing daemon as well. And there's also a directory over here for log messages from the Samba daemon running on this system. Now, usually these files are just text files and they can be viewed with standard text viewing utilities. For example, we can run the tail command to view the firewall def log file to view the last few entries in that log file. That's it for this demonstration. In this demo, we talked about viewing Linux log files. We looked at the boot.log file. We looked at using the dmessage command. We looked at the wtemp file. We looked at the last log file. We talked about the messages file that was used on older distributions. We looked at the journal, and then we looked at the log files that are used by various services on the system that are saved in the var log directory.